everyone. I'm Carrie Grimes Bostock. I'm a Google Fellow. I currently work with the Core ML team in a technical lead capacity, and I've been working across Google as well to try to tie together our ML plans and our ML infrastructure to build kind of the next 20 years of Google technology that we need. Um, I'm going to try to wrap up today and, and some key points and some things I hope I can bring to your perspective here. So first of all, you know, the key takeaway here is that diversity in the ML developer space is important. Whatever your background, gender, you know, everything else, you bring that to development in ML, those new ideas and those new product enablements that are, that are really going to make Google products, other products, open source software more applicable to more people around the world. And I think that's a really important thing to remember that it's easy to look at our community inside the developer world and think about it being male dominated, having certain types of you know, country makeup, background makeup, but really the people using what you build, the people who are gonna benefit from it or not benefit from it are, are people like us, people around the world um, who have different perspectives, right? And, and so I think it's key to remember what you bring to the table when you participate in these larger developer and software forums, right? That your perspective is important. The other thing we've all known from reading the news is that AI may be a key new technology, but it doesn't exist in an engineering vacuum, right? It's not a black box. Understanding the data that gets fed in is a critical step to building models. And it's also central to recognizing certain sources of bias, right? And that's something where our thinking evolves over time, right? And when you read the news, you think about when you are really building ML models, when you're making recommendations, you're making decisions. And those decisions have consequences. And it's very important to think about how the technology you're using, how the data you're using, leads to consequences, right? And it's easier to think about that in kind of medical applications where you know there's a diagnosis criterion, but it also it has the same outcomes, whether you're doing facial recognition, if your software works less well for people whose skin color is different, that's going to affect everyone, right? And that's just, you know, in nice to have applications. But it's a key thing to remember that you are making decisions with this technology. It's not an engineering vacuum. And your background and how we use fairness technologies and responsible AI are really critical to making things successful. At Google, we strongly believe that open source contributions are for everyone. Uh, that's always a tough sell in some sense because I think that the internet is not always the friendliest place and people who feel disadvantaged in participating in those forums tend to internalize it even more, right? And, you know, it's funny to think that that you're the only one feeling that way when probably, you know, I, I live with someone who contributes to open source quite a lot and he even, um, you know, my husband will come in and say, I can't believe someone said this to me. And I'm going, well, you have this huge open source following and you have all this privilege in this space and all this respect and you still get these notes where you can't believe someone said this to you, right? And, and I think that as much as we need to work to identify how to make the open source environment more effective for everyone, I think we also need to make sure that we're all representing that ourselves you know, the only way the community is going to be easier to work with is if we work in the community and try to change that tone. But also, you know, as Google, we want to try to actively identify and remove barriers to participating, right? And make sure that projects are accessible, that people feel comfortable. And so I just strongly encourage you to bring how you see things and how you'd like to work together to the open source community. You know, the last thing I will say is I always encourage everyone to feel entitled. Entitlement is a loaded word because um, it tends to say that that it's kind of a, it's not something you deserve. But I think the way I want to use it is to say that you should feel entitled to work on the projects where you believe you can contribute value in the ways that you need to work. And whether that means that you 
you need to choose a job which is consistent with your family responsibilities and supportive of them, or that you need to work with people who you just don't feel uncomfortable around. Those are things that you're entitled to in the work environment, and you're entitled to be treated with respect when you come into those contacts, right? And if you're not being, then you're entitled to get a new job, right? And work on it a different way. And you have those choices. And I think it's so easy to tell ourselves that we shouldn't need as much childcare as we do, or we shouldn't need as much help with family responsibilities, or we shouldn't need to change jobs. But the reality is you have to take a very positive and pragmatic approach to getting what you want. Now, I hope that one day, you know, things like having a lot of family responsibilities won't be unevenly distributed. I hope that's what equity, <laughs> equity means in that space, whether it falls more heavily on women, on folks, folks who are single parents or single children, or on people whose cultures maybe don't support the work that they've chosen to do as strongly as others do. But the reality is, you know, Susan Wojcicki said something very interesting once, which I'm probably going to mangle, but she said, you know, there's no way that she could do her job if she didn't have someone else take care of almost everything else except spending time with her kids. And it's a very pragmatic statement, but I think that's the reality of trying to get what you want in an engineering environment is you need a job which is supportive, where you feel secure. You need a job which is consistent with your family responsibilities or other personal things that are important to you. If you strongly believe in you know, going out volunteering in your community, that needs to be something that's consistent with your job and with your work environment, right? And so I just encourage you all to take a really pragmatic view of you are entitled to participate in ML. You are entitled to work in an engineering or developer environment, and you need to have the support that you need to make that feasible for you. You shouldn't always be feeling like, you know, you don't need what you actually need. And so with that, I sort of encourage you to just take that away, take everything you've learned here away and try to inspire more people to get involved and to work and to develop in the ML space. So a few key takeaways for post event, you know, what can you do to follow up? I think the first thing is that you can really integrate responsible AI practices into your workflow as you build models, but also as you engage other people to review data or bring their knowledge in or help plan products. Those are key elements of AI. And you can learn more about that at the TensorFlow Responsible AI site, but you know, just keeping in mind that ML is not in a vacuum, that it depends on your data quality, the breadth of data you've been able to collect, and to bring in reviewers, whether they're technical or, um, you know, just to kind of credibility check the kind of results that you're, you're producing, because we're always learning new things about how the real world interacts with ML. You can also build your own community. I think feeling comfortable in this space is really important. It's important for a lot of us to stay in our jobs. And so I encourage you to either join the TensorFlow forum, get your questions answered, or take other opportunities to really accredit or accredit yourself in the ML field to meet other people. You can work through the Google Developer Experts program. You can get certificates from TensorFlow. Those are things to help you feel more established in the field, and they'll also help connect you with other people who are on the same journey, which is important. And finally, you know, you can do other things. You can join OSS communities or contribute to ML projects. If you're interested, you can head over to GitHub and learn how to join a TensorFlow group. These are all great ways to make yourself feel like you have a place here, you know what you're doing, you can meet other people who are working on the same kinds of things. And finally, you know, you can stay in touch. There's an ML Community Day on November 9th. Um, you can also connect on social media or through YouTube with the TensorFlow YouTube channel. You can get more content, you can follow on Twitter, whatever it takes to really make you feel like you're in touch with the ML community and feel more embedded in that community is important. With that, I think I'm gonna close us out and I hope you've had a wonderful time at this event and learned a lot of new stuff. Thanks. Mm -hmm.